Hi, from Slide Nerd, this is Waves over here. What's up, folks? In this video, I'm gonna continue further talking about the Grid View Simple app that we were making over here. If you guys remember, we were trying to make this app that shows different country flags. You click on a flag, it opens up in a separate dialog box with the name of the country and an OK button. So, this is probably the fourth or the fifth video in this. Here, I'm gonna show you guys how to override this get view method. So these are the following steps that we need to consider. You see, we have the structure of a single item or a single block inside the grid view, inside this file which is called single underscore item dot xml, which contains nothing but an image view. We need this structure in Java because I'm going to fill the appropriate source of the image at runtime inside this image view in Java. So for that, I have to actually perform a special operation called layout inflation. Now, you guys are probably wondering that, hey, single underscore item dot XML, it is a relative layout with an image view. Why don't you use find view by ID method to get a reference and then do stuff? Remember, find view by ID returns an existing reference to this XML object over here. But layout inflator is a special class that gives you a new object for every time you call the inflate method. Now let me show you what I mean. If this is the first time you're creating this item, now how would we know that? Here, the second argument is what tells us whether you're creating it for the first time or you're creating it for the subsequent time. Now, I have a separate video on list view optimization and view recycling. If you guys are new to this, please go back and check it out over there because it's a very complex topic and I've taken a separate video to talk on that. I'm gonna say layout inflator. This layout inflator class is the one that is going to bring that single underscore item dot XML from XML to Java in the form of a new object. So I need a reference to that by saying layout inflator is now. I need the context object over here. If you guys remember, I've passed a context object at the top. I can go down, say context context over here assign this by saying this dot context equals to context then go down and I can now say context dot get system service layout inflator service the layout inflator class cannot be initialized by saying layout inflator is new layout inflator it's actually a system service now I'm not gonna say inflator dot inflate now the special method inflate is the one which is going to take the XML file and give me back a Java object so I need to pass the XML file by saying r.layout the view group which is going to be parent I'm gonna say view group and false over here now again this one single step has a whole lot of history and geography behind it I have a separate video called the layout inflator in my playlist where I have exactly explained what these three parameters are what happens when you put a true over here what happens when you put a null over here and so on so if you guys are new to this please go back and check it out because there is just too much to explain in that and so here I'm gonna say view row equals to this so now we need to make one small minor modification to this code you see get view is called every time an item needs to be created so we are doing this layout inflator dot inflate operation which is a very expensive procedure we don't want to do this every time we only want to do this when we are creating the object for the first time so this second parameter tells us if we are creating it for the first time or not if we are creating for the first time the second parameter is actually null if we are not creating an item for the first time or we are recycling stuff which is already existent then this is not null so let's actually use that I'm gonna say view row equals to if row is null that means we are creating stuff for the first time else we are reusing stuff so when we are creating stuff for the first time, we put this layout inflator code inside. I'm gonna remove this view row definition over here. Now, I'm also going to create the class view holder. If you guys remember, this class view holder has nothing great but just an image view inside. And the reason I have this class is because I want to perform one time initialization of the image view using find view by ID because find view by ID is also an expensive operation I don't want to do this again and again so let me show you the magic I'm gonna say view holder holder equals to null now when the first time I'm creating stuff everything is normal row is null which means I'm creating first time so I'm gonna say holder 
equals to new view holder. So I'm going to pass the row parameter inside. Now observe the magic. This row object, which is nothing but inflated or inflate, this row object actually contains this relative layout, which is the root of our single underscore item dot XML. So when I pass this row object inside, let's go above and see what happens. Here in the view holder class, this relative layout is over here. And using that relative layout, I'm able to find the image view, which is inside the relative layout. Pretty twisted, huh? And yet, it's pretty clear if you guys notice it very carefully. So this holder has been created. Now, I need to store this holder so that when I'm recycling, I don't do this step because remember, every time I'm calling this constructor by saying new view holder, I'm actually performing this find view by ID operation, which is an expensive process. I don't want to do this. So I'm going to go here down. I'm going to store this by saying row dot set tag. This set tag is a special method by which you can actually store something inside a view object. I'm going to use that to store the holder. Now look at the magic. When we are recycling stuff over here, we, we, the row is not null. That means we are inside our else condition. I can simply say row dot get tag and then I can say view holder holder equals to row dot get tag perform the appropriate type casting and look at the magic. Now this way, whenever we are recycling, we are not calling the constructor, which means we are not doing this find view by ID method, which means we are saving resources. That's how the optimization trick works. Again, if you guys have not seen the list optimization video, please go back and check it. I've explained stuff a lot more detail over there. So this takes care, takes care of the recycling part. Now comes the main part to actually put the values. Now what? We have the holder, we have the row, so what? We need the image view inside the holder which is nothing but holder.myCountry. Remember, this is the image view we have. We need to set the image resource for this by saying set image resource. And we need the ID of the image over here. Now, which ID are you talking about? For the zeroth item, we need the ID of India's flag. For the first item, we need the ID of the United States flag and so on. So how will we get this number 01? If we get those numbers, our problem is solved. Let's go back. This int i is exactly what we need. Int i is 0 for the first item, is 1 for the second item and so on. So what we can do here down is we can use this i, we can use our list to get the item from that given index. If you guys remember, our list is nothing but our array list over here, which contains a ob set of objects of countries, right? So what I can do is I can say something like this country temp equals to list dot get i now if you guys remember this country is nothing but a class at the top right it contains both the image id and the country name bundled together so I'm, i can extract the image id from this country object so i can go down here and i can actually say something like this set image resource temp dot image id and this will actually set my image for the given item now I know this is a very complex piece of code. If you're directly jumping to this video, please go back and see the last 20 videos because I have covered everything which I've been talking about in this video so far in those 20 videos. So now I can directly return this row object over here and we are done. So let's actually try running this and see how things work. Remember, we have still not made the part about the dialog box. One more thing we need to do is actually set the adapter. I'm going to say migrate dot set adapter waves adapter pass the context inside and we're done. So at this point after the adapter has been set, everything should work perfectly. So let's actually run this by clicking run at the top and there our app is running in the emulator and bam, there you go folks. All our flags are visible clearly on the grid view. We can see that there is no scroll bar because we only have 10 items on the screen. If there were more, there would be an automatic scroll bar added. So in this video, I've talked about a lot of things. Please go back, take your time, understand them. It's pretty complex for a beginner. In the next video, I'm going to show you exactly how to make this work when you click on it. So you click on this, we need to have a dialog box that will have the same image and the name of the country and the OK button. So let's actually complete this in the next video and then we are done. So in the meantime, if you like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel, comment, let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.